Oh my god, it's so weird, you guys. We're back. It's a new year. It's a new year. We're back. How are you all doing? Doing pretty good. Y y well, Decent. your current situation, I get. The best I could get. Yeah. Uh, we've been gone for well over nearly two months. Because I'm not sure when this will be going up, but hopefully as soon as I possibly can get it. Because scheduling's weird. January uh, got screwed up. Yeah. Anyways, I'm Yaro. Uh, I bring together several friends from across the internet to play on a DD and d livestream show. We don't really have too many announcements, mainly because, you know, it's the new year. And also, on top of that, I, I've just been busy doing everything else instead of this. <laughs> So, um, first and foremost, if you guys are currently either caught up on D6 or are still trying to catch up on D6, our VODs go live over on YouTube at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific Time, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, our, VO our live streams have been going up over uh, at 6. I might be changing that relatively soon due to uh, some certain prospects about timing right now. But uh, also our podcasts go live at uh, 6 a.m. Uh, nine uh, or 6 a.m. 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific and Eastern time, as well as just uh, yeah, just trying to keep up with it. <laughs> I think I might be still in trouble because I don't think I posted the last episode's uh, podcast version just yet. I gosh darn it! Yeah, damn. I haven't found anybody to do the. The podcast role. I've been very busy. I I was gone for like uh, weeks. <laughs> I've been very busy. Haven't been able to touch my computer once. Uh, so that said, I think we uh, don't have any other D six announcements. So if you ask me, I think it's a great and fantastic time to get back into it. Yeah, to get back into it. Let's jump on into. It's episode of D six. Where are all my playlists? I don't know. What'd you do? I try to try to be good about it. All right. So, where we had. Last left off. After an assault from the Red Hour on the town of Sanzibar, and all of you traversing across the deserts once more in order to try and catch up and refind your friend Citra, as well as her mother, you find yourselves before the beckoning of a battle in a situation where Citra is trying to convince uh, Lothric, who is currently the head of the chapter here, to convince him that teaming up with the Sun Swords here will still lead to his downfall. Many, many convincing and persuasive checks later, you are all enamored into an immediate fight with Sun Swords before activating and raising the massive tomb of Amundra. However, not too far behind, the army of the Sun Swords, being led by Deus himself, begins to traverse throughout the desert in order to assault the tomb. With the help of Citra's grandmother, of course, creating a giant sandstorm to try and buffet them away for as long as they possibly can, and the rest of you finally entering within the tomb. After being within the tomb for a short amount of time, you run into the entity known as Savidan, who is not as much of a lich as all of you would have initially thought, coming to find that he is a guy that just was too driven by anxiety to die. That's a mood. So, with that being said, 
he agrees to partially help you. After a little bit of inner party conflict, though. But now, you begin to walk within the tombs, hopefully to quickly find any more information as to how to get into the center. So, with that said, as all of you begin to follow Savidin, I will give you a bit of time to converse among yourselves. So just as a recap, it's us four. Citra's parents, mm -hmm. Lothric, and Savidin. Yep. <laughs> okay. Just want to be sure I knew who the cast was. <laughs> Quickly putting on different masks at the same time. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, our current issue is that this tomb isn't going back down. Um, we're not sure how long my grandmother's going to keep this sandstorm up. And whatever Deus is looking for is well within this tomb. So, m my thought is that we get to the tomb first and take a hold of whatever it is he's trying to get to before he does, and you deactivated all the traps? She's looking up at Civedon. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, <laughs> I did not do that. <laughs> in here. I, not in the, the tomb, in here. Oh, in, in here? Yes. No, the place perfectly fine. Just, you know, I, you... I was doing a lot of research in this room specific to start with, so had to, you know, fair clear enough, out. Fair enough, fair yeah. enough. And I get it. Would you know how to reactivate them? No, 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 no. Um, the the reason why is because I purposely removed them so that way that they wouldn't be a problem for later. Oh, that is a problem. Yeah. Okay. Because you know, every now and again, you know, I like to not float in the middle of the air and uh, touch ground, grass, sand. Okay, then. So there's no reactivating to slow them down, so we really are in the clock now. I mean, we could go to my research facility and um, close the door, lock it real tight, and nobody can get in or out and just, you know, stay here for a couple of years. Yeah, can't do that. Solid idea, can't do that. <laughs> Azure needs to see you, first of all. Oh, Halloween Sashers. <laughs> Hi, <Yeah>. great. <laughs> and then you can go back. No. If it involves Alois, there is no go back. The reason we were searching you out is I was hoping you may have answers to dealing with uh, Big Wolf. She's out. As herself now. She was initially a, 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 a big problem. Uh, well, she is now a big problem. Well, it, it's not as simple as, like, you know, shoving her back into her cauldron. <laughs> Which I feel like that's never really going to be a good answer. It just kind of prolongs the inevitable. Yeah. Uh, might have some answers. Again. I'm like this this is kind of above me. Well, some answers is better than none. Okay. And as you see that you're conversing with him, you see your father is constantly eyeing him. And Lothric is also eyeing your father. <laughs> She's seeing this happen in, in real time? Yeah. It's kind of like that one scene where it's just like somebody's aiming behind the person behind them. Yeah, and she she'll see that, and she just kind of flat stares at them. It's like, can 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 we put personal issues aside, please? We have an army behind us, and you can see as we can, like turns to your father, and I am really, really sorry, like. Did not mean what happened to you. It was like, I'm sure most undead people 
say that. And he's just like, okay, 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 just avoiding conflict, avoiding conflict. Dante speaks up. All right, well, all things aside, I think we need to take care of this thing now. <coughs> right, all right. Um, my place first? Uh, if that's the best course of action, yeah. Okay. Do you see as he's just like floating along the Yeah, Seacher will nice step back work. a little bit and just kind of like grab her dad's hand and just squeeze it like, please. <laughs> All right. The All right, last fine. thing we need is inviting right now. I understand. For now. And as the rest of you begin to push forward, Leodon, with your passive perception. Your infinite perception. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> The non-stop perception. <laughs> there are four ninjas behind us. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> As you begin to pass, you notice that the walls here tell an interesting story. You know, this this was a place where somebody was supposed to be buried. Um, one particular mural catches your eye as everyone begins to walk past it. As you can see with what looks like to be two individuals. This one main mural, or this one individual who is standing tall and has this large staff in hand with what looks like to be four glowing pieces inside of it. And then off to the side is this almost very early interpretation of uh, of an individual make me a religion check that's going to be a nine okay it is an early interpretation of a particular god it doesn't seem like they have come into their space just yet um, <laughs> there are a few gear-like motifs that design them, and the blues and silver colors that create the individual. And you can see as this mural, as one hand is placed upon this other individual, you can see what looks like to be a drop into this blackened void and a single single almost a wispy like thing almost as if it could be designed like a soul just kind of sitting in an abyssal of darkness you mean like how sob sits in darkness right now hmm. but i didn't see it this is all connor <laughs> Would he have stopped, or we'd still for? If, on, you would have noticed it. Yeah, if if it caught his eye, he would have paused briefly just to look over the mural. If he stopped, I think Seacher just kind of looked behind him, like, "You okay?" Yeah, it's just something about this mural caught my eye. What about it? don't know what it's sort of depicting here. You see these... At this point, uh, Teacher would have, like, walked back over to Connor, by the way. Okay. Yeah. To Leo. Mechanical things, and then it drops down. Well, gears are usually associated with Erethus. And then, seeing the staff... Citra would kind of like tug on his jacket arm to like make make him lower a little bit. He'd kneel down. And she'd whisper to him exactly what Sav told him. There are four shards in this tomb, in that staff. Sav has been telling me these things. Do not say anything. 
and she means like the same as the sword that Samael has. His eyes will look over at her without his head moving at all. He'll nod shallowly. Um, I think if anything, she'd probably like, well, Savidin's been in here the longest. Maybe he has an answer for what this is? Maybe. If anybody know anything about what's going on in here, it's him. Yeah. As you got, as the rest of the party is kind of like rounding a corner, you could see it's like the skull popping back around the corner. Uh, you know, we're kind of losing daylight. Night light? Night light. Night light. We probably should catch right. back up with them. Yeah. All right. <laughs> As the rest of you push on, um, about 20 minutes passes, you guys are kind of <coughs> skipping your step to kind of hurry to what is his own private facility. As you do, you enter what is this stone room with what looks like to be several wooden pieces that have been taken over the years to kind of just place on top of each other to create a proper table through some respective means. But this was definitely a room that was kind of just a processing room. Like mummification preparation? Mm Mm-hmm. I did not watch The Mummy this weekend. (laughs) (laughs) As you can see, there are several bottles, uh, pieces of parchment, uh, what are these long drawings that kind of go along the side of the walls, um, you can see in, in the center of the room where what would have been the tables for the mummification process have been turned into actual table tables uh, for his research. And what is this big, thick book that is currently uh, currently still being written? There are pieces of notes and paper kind of sticking out all along it. Is that the book you were talking about? Yes, uh, you know, about 100 years worth of work here, and I'm still not done. (laughs) Yeah, uh, well, the the first half was for a place way out here and uh, a little more to the north, uh, but the past 50 years have been damning, (laughs) because, well, there's one place that I can't get to, Mm, and I have tried, like... A lot. And I just learned that my lesson was that I'm just never going to get through it. And I have optionally called it as the Gates of Amun-Ra, because why not? That's probably where he's at. Probably. And the fact that it has tons of old magic preventing teleportation inside of it is kind of interesting. Annoying, but interesting. Citra's, uh, the way... When her mom was talking to her about what her blood could do, it's just like echoing in her head. Like, uh, there's a target on my back. It's so big. <laughs> mm. Mm. Right then. Uh, uh, so, questions, answers I might have, but uh, don't ask too many. Not at the same time, please. Okay. Um. So up into that gate, there are no traps, right? Uh, no. <laughs> I made okay. sure of that. Okay, so at least that anxiety is put to, put to rest for now. But anything beyond that is fair game. Yep. So, did you... Sorry, did, uh, did you find... Oh, did you find anything about... Oh, you say, uh, this handsome man's bloodline as he beckons to, um, beckons to Citra's dad. We don't need to talk about that. Doctor, please. I'm kind of curious about that. <laughs> sorry, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use a uh, sorry I'm gonna use um, um what's it called um I'm gonna lie and uh, sorry Aaron I'm gonna ask for you to roll me for it because <laughs> um I can't get on D and D Beyond right now. Uh oh. Okay. Uh, your deception, right? Yeah, can you roll my deception? 18. Which 18, cool. needs does, to be... 
<laughs> which will have to go against Savidin's insight. Because he needs to know whether or not you're lying. But tell me what the lie is. Okay. If the lie is going to be, um, I have somebody I'm trying to impress back at the, <laughs> back at, at the, um, Bastion, uh, because she is obsessed with, uh, blood magic. Do you so want me bringing to open her up back... your character sheet? Huh? Do you want one of us to have your character sheet open so we can tell you the... Yes, what please. Is your... Okay. Okay. Well then. Please and thank you, friends. I got you. Okay. That's As... what my deception is. Pulling back research for... Yeah. Oh, okay. Deception is plus seven for you. Uh. In in light of that, as you say this, he's he, he's old, like hundreds of years old. He knows when somebody's lying to him. Damn it! And as he kind of just like the the skull kind of just like pricks one way. Bloodlines do play a massive role in the history of every nation. You can lead back every king, every queen, every soldier to who died in what war, in what war for what reasons. I don't find that somebody trying to convince me that they want knowledge of somebody else's bloodline to simulate to blood magic but I do know a few things as he looks towards the three of you Citra uh, Tarion and uh, Elise the idol wins she just and just hanging her head. <laughs> as he pulls out a book and he he pulls out the big massive research book and begins <laughs> to float it over, almost as if he's control effing what he's looking for. That's convenient. <laughs> and after the book kind of just flips through pages, it then slams shut once again. The Eidolwins, I know nothing about. Whatever answer is behind that door to your very long and experienced bloodline, if you don't have that answer already, what could be the tomb of the very first Sultan could hold? those very answers but if you are not already <laughs> if you are not already royalty then I would not assume that you are royalty that's a relief that does not mean that you didn't play a role to royalty of course but mm -hmm. <laughs> That doesn't mean that you have a right to the family or the royal line. Of, Trust know. me, we don't want that. And you can see his hands are like, yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> Though the person leading the army outside does. Old fools are often convinced that they are right. Anyways, what do you know about, like, what is on the doors itself besides the old magic? Like, is there anything written on it? Uh. From what I, what I can tell you is that it's, it's definitely the older magics, like, Lumerian magics. Lumerian magic? Mm-hmm. They were, they were advanced for their field in that day. 
and as far as I am aware, as what has been told of me, Lumeria has returned. And I have often correlated with what I have learned from some particular individuals and what I was able to find on the door. Those old magics were usually common with those of higher specifications, those who found themselves allied with the first king of Lumeria. Uh, the whole thing with this first sultan happened right before that. The first sultan died after the Favel Mark had started. Oh, after it started, okay. Yeah. Which is also kind of curious. Hey, can somebody... Yes, Jade? Uh, can somebody roll a history check for me? Uh, let's see. History for you is a it's just a straight History. d20 roll. Yeah. Okay. You just roll me a d20? I can check that history because I have expertise in it. Let's see. <coughs> I can give you two very different kinds of histories if that's what you're looking for. We'll go with Citra's history. Okay. Yeah. So when it's expertise, what do I do with this again? Uh, it just it just gives you a better roll. Okay. I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Oh, lovely. Now it's back to normal. Fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your passive. Okay. So as far as history goes, uh, Amun Ra, the name Amun Ra, as far as it's picked up, is. Shortly before the Favel Mach, and then his death would be after the Favel Mach had start had started. Okay, so it cradles on either side. Got it. Yeah. So his time was before the Great War, and which would put him in a very particular position into having met the first king at some point. So, if it's Lumerian magic, it would have to be Lumerian that sealed it. Right? It could very well be that, or it could have been what was a transfer of knowledge. You know, Lumerian magic long died out after the Favel Mark due to it being lost over time, but as far as the first Sultan was concerned, he was a very well prowessed mage as well as a skilled combatant. And absolutely awful. Anyways, uh, has Sov been saying anything or listening to this whole thing? Lis listening very intently, but you also get a feeling that kind of just leaks out every now and again. Almost shame. Shame of not knowing earlier. Yeah, just mental, like, shoulder pat kind of deal. Uh, we stopped at the mural that w before we came here. Do you know what that was about? Specifically that little piece of soul? That, or it looked like one? Oh. Uh, well, there are plenty of stories that kind of tell the long history of uh, Amun Ra. Uh, which his name is also kind of an interesting history lesson as well, but uh, to cover the first part, there was there was the time of his death. Various people had often said that during his last moments in life, as he stood upon the top of his tomb, that there was somebody there to meet him. Meet him? Mm -hmm. Like when one of the did. gods? Potentially who is well known for not liking them. And what was perceived as the possibility is that he was sent into a void of cold sand, a, 
place where there is no bliss, where you are awake at all times, frozen in space. Like a punishment. punishment. Okay. That sounds pretty rough. Well, he um, was pretty bad. Yeah, no. Oh my god, I he can't. Was a hip- he was a hypocrite, as far as a lot of people are concerned. <coughs> He outlawed necromancy, but used necromancy himself. He killed thousands. He drained this very land to sand. So this was not a desert in the beginning. No, no. It's he goes over and he pulls down one of the tapestries on the wall, and as it does, you can see with what looks like to be old graying green paints, a flourishing jungle that kind of lines the wall before it begins to crumble into pieces, almost as if long slabs have just long since fallen and broken onto the ground. Wow. This was a Celsi before amun But he blamed this on tieflings and half-breeds. Well, as far right? as... <laughs> Well, as far as the stories go, I mean, he heavily contributed to what had happened, but this was a consistent matter. They fought a long war and a long battle. And by the time the end of the fame of Elmach came some 150 years ago, this land had been turned into a barren desert. The heavy necromantic energies that had been pulled from the land had done its damage. That's unfortunate. <coughs> what was the other part you were going to say? Oh, yes. amun name. So amun is technically a last name. Not their first, not their not a middle. A last, last name. name. amun title. last name. Yeah. It's, it's the title that would have been given to the next sultan as everyone would have passed. But, strangely, the use of amun had ceased to happen shortly after the Favel month. And I can only take the guess as to the reason why. Nobody wanted to be associated with the man who had brought down his entire kingdom. Interesting, am I right? <laughs> yeah. And I guess understandable. Um. It's... Ooh. <laughs> And so after which, uh, every sultan after him just took up the n- name of Aselsium. So every sultan as a current is what would have been an Amun-Ra, but is now currently an Aselsium. So Aselsium was Amun-Ra. Yes. And no one knows his first name? <laughs> Apparently not, as... I've searched long and hard throughout a majority of these corridors in order to try and piece together what could have possibly been the actual true name of Amun-Ra. But because t- history has gone on for so long and nobody's been able to find the answer, it's just that Amun-Ra was the name of this individual. Huh. Just mentally just seeing if anything striking a bell. To Sov. Meta, meta speak? Yeah, she's talking to Sov mentally. Yeah. She's not going to say it out loud. Uh, oh, mean, but, as well, far meta, as Sov meta is, speaking, do you think Sov is Almond Raw? I have no idea. Sov. He was sent to a dark place. It's. He was locked in there because of uh, Dasher. Yes, Sob, but he as got far there as somehow. They are aware, is curious as to where a lot of this meaning comes from. But all they know is that they were there once. Yeah, and Sav already said that this man was a lot worse than history depicts him as. But I see where you're connecting the dots. Trust me, we're on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, should I say so? What a twist right, that well, would be, right? All right. Do we need any more 
to ask me any more questions of um, Savid in here. Oh, great lich. <laughs> Uh, you can see it's like, oh, thank you. Um, I mean, what you have done is impressive. Ah, yes. Uh, well, I've spent a great number of decades trying to clean this place up to the best of my ability, you know, getting rid of the spiders and the mummies. You got mummies? You got rid of mummies from their resting place? Well, at least the ones here, the... I mean, <laughs> when you're, um, this, you kind of can tell them what to do, and, you know, I just oh. made them leave. Oh, so you just made yeah, them walk a- up, just get up and leave. Wait, wait, that sounds familiar, as Dante remembers, um, Salazar. <laughs> hmm. Uh, <laughs> I, I prefer not to use any... Necromancy in my in my practice. I I'm a researcher, not a not a mage. Yeah. It, this this was just a last resort. Okay. Okay. So clearly, um. whatever it is that we need answers to and to get ourselves out of this mess is gonna be beyond those gates. Originally, I'll be very honest with you. We were just here to bring you to Azure. There was never any intent to go into that tomb. But given that, the choices are probably going to be one of either. Either we go in on our own to get ahead of them, or we're probably going to be stopped and forced to go through. At play point. <laughs> well, also, to be extremely fair here, I wouldn't have left either which way, because I... I had some assumptions as to how to open the gates, but not exactly all of them, and I wasn't going to leave until my actually until my research was done done. Yeah. Citra would be looking to her mom as to what she said. Just You said you had the help of grandfather when splitting me back then, right? From no. Soft. You no. you did approach him. Uh, no, I... Uh... Would he have any idea of what I am? No. No, no, no. I, I've never talked... We never discussed what you were to your grandfather, to Deus, at all. What, who we did talk to was this Alois Azure, who... He's our boss, are, Mom. Yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. you know that. And then also his associate as well. The lady from before or someone else? The, la- the lady. The okay. one with the yellow eyes. Yes. We haven't spoken to your grandfather. And- Why would me returning suddenly sp- just start all this? It's probably because he, he knows that Tarion found it. Well, and she'll look back to Sabine and like, it looks like you're going to get your wish to get beyond those gates, I believe. Well, I don't look forward to the dangers. In fact, I'm probably not going to join you for the dangers. (laughs) Do you want to sit here and wait for them to come through the front door? (laughs) Not really. I'm pretty sure you're probably better off with us then. (laughs) I can tell you right now, we're a lot nicer than they are. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. It's fine. Fine. Not gonna lie, Citra is very nervous right now. <laughs> <laughs> like you're both sharing anxiety. Yeah, we're both feeding off each other's anxiety. <laughs> okay, let's see a mummy. Let's see a mummy of the first sultan. All right. 
Well then. And then she'd remember for a second and look at Dante going, If I'm ahead of you, please don't throw your marbles at what would be traps and hit me with arrows again. This happened before Leo was freed. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. I'll do it only when I'm ahead. <laughs> All of you are so very strange. Yeah, this whole scenario is strange. <clears throat> uh, uh. And you can see as Lothric is kind of just picking up papers and looking at it through the glasses. Are you okay, Lothric? Oh, yes. Absolutely fine. You know, it's not like we've cornered ourselves into a massive tomb where we could possibly all be slaughtered by a crazed old elven man with the intent to wipe it us wasn't all out. my fault or any of our fault that you made a deal with him blindly. That's fair. It's just I am <laughs> considering my options and all of them are leading to my death. Well, if you stick with us, you probably have a higher chance of living. <laughs> as you can see, as, uh... <laughs> as Sabine, like, looks over, just like, Oh, well, at least we're both in the... Same boat, right? Listen, you know. None of us wanted to be in this position. None of us did. But Dante's I was very serious about Loth what I told you. Dante's gonna go to Lothric. Hey, if it makes you feel any better, you can just kick the he the mummy's head of Amon Ra. Why would? Sounds fun. I mean, given what he's done <laughs> to most of our people, yeah. Uh, come on, it'll be a good suck. It'll be good for f soccer practice. I mean, I would totally do it. What should soccer? really be called football? <laughs> no, you never. I you never heard of it? It's my own invention. It. It's, it's my own invention. Oh, you should tell me the rules of it later. Mm -hmm. Alright. Well, if we stay make here any longer, we're just going to be cornered in your research room. Yeah, <laughs> just make sure just make sure you don't steal it, Dante. I know you like to steal shit. No. No promises. No promises. Actually, yes, promises, because Leo will kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, <coughs> I so. see Connor lighting up, but I don't See him talking. Maybe uh, I'm not talking. Oh, okay. I just want to make sure okay. that you weren't having a sound issue. Yeah, I'm probably just moving. Let's see if picked up. Got it. All right. So, as as uh, all of you begin to kind of somewhat prepare for what will be the inner part of the tomb, you can see as Savidan's kind of just like packing a few things, grabbing spectacles and various other little devices, as well as the large book and a pen and paper, or a pen and inkwell to, to bring along with him. It's like, oh, I'm not going to miss a chance on research on this one. Uh, that, I right. wouldn't leave it behind anyway with what we know is coming through at some point. Oh, yes. No. There. 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 Hmm. All right. Uh, well, then, I guess I'll uh, lead the way here. <clears throat> I, I, I'm gonna say this right now. Seacher's hoping beyond hope that what she, if she thinks she can open the door, doesn't work. Be like, oh, problem solved. We can leave now. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Alrighty. So, as you traverse, you find yourselves. Deeper within the tomb of Amun Ra, this massive, just, you know, stone city, if you will. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> As you finally make it uh, deeper and deeper within, as you head down several floors in order to get here. You finally get to what is this w somewhat whitish room for this massive stone door with what is this very 
early interpretation of an individual's. They stand there with that, once again, with this large staff, uh, with these four greenish glowing bits that kind of embed itself there. And another side of this door, as with what looks like to be the falling of several almost demonic looking like people. Like tieflings. Yep. And at the bottom of the door, what looks like to be this golden lined piece of metal with a handprint that kind of just embeds into it. Huh. Isn't that nice? That seems obvious. I mean, it was supposed to be his tomb. Yeah, I know. Whoever Still... needed to get in there would often need to get in there, and anyone that wasn't supposed to be in there would not be able to get in. So, you know, I've touched it multiple times, don't get me wrong. Nothing's with. activated or anything, right? Like, violently? No. No, never. Never opened and never did anything. Yeah, she'll infer what saw one last time, like, uh, you ready to find out and see if what Mom said is true? I'm ready to know. She's gonna try it without cutting her hand first because it still stings. <laughs> but, like, it's still healing, so I guess it's still partially open, so she'll just take the cloth back off of her hand where she used it originally to raise the entrance. <sighs> Here goes nothing. And just place her hand on it. As you put your hand on it, a few moments pass. And then a few more. before the gold begins to she's almost... like at first happy about it like nothing's happening <laughs> but that large gold band almost as if it's becoming slowly malleable oh no as the gold begins to fill into the door as it sinks deep within and it begins to spread out and enter deep within the door. And you can see with what looks like to have been the several outlines and now beginning to <coughs> shift and change the picture that was originally this entity. The staff changes from what looks like to be this wide fan staff into a long scythe-like blade and you can see that it's not just tieflings anymore orcs bugbears several different kinds of races had fallen to the hand of this individual before with what looks like to be small inscriptions that line the sides of the doors that read the exact same way. Who speaks Celestial? I do. You do? Anybody else? Nope. No. Nope. Are you going to send it to me or something so I can read it? Or <laughs> No, I could just tell you. Okay. The inscription as it reads, Here lies the first sultan, reaper of Aselsia. Oh. Yeah, no, that, that, that seems to fit. And afterwards you begin to hear just a bit of the clattering of footsteps and armor as they have finally entered the tomb. Oh boy, here they come. They haven't gotten down to your level, it's just, it's echoing. Because it took you a while to get down here. 
So it's probably going to about take them a mile to get here, too. Yep. Clock's ticking. All right. All right. Well, then. The first, uh... Room. Who's ready? None of us are, but we're going to have to be. All righty, then. Let's go. Is the door gets pushed open, you feel as if they're almost as light as air before they slide across and open with what is this long corridor with an entrance off to the left side. Uh, it's a very thin corridor. As all of you begin to slowly enter, the door very quickly closes. It's, much, it's very light. <laughs> For some yeah. strange reason. Well, let's just hope this doesn't open for them then. Yep. <sighs> is it dark already? Because if that's the case, she will cast light on her staff. It is very dark in here. Yeah, so light it is. Ping! <laughs> yep. As the door closes, it's just black. I was really awesome. hoping that door gonna wasn't going to open. <sighs> well... Well, it did. And then Dante's going to cast um, Radiant Flame on his hand. Alright, is it just light? <laughs> Fights. Yep. As this long corridor has about ten feet between each side. Can someone roll an investigation for Dante? Hey, I'm trying to see if there's any traps. Your investigation is a plus four. Uh, I can roll a d20 mm -hmm. if you want. Yes, please. Oof. So that's a solid ten. Woo! <laughs> What's my passive investigation? <laughs> passive? Your passive is 14. Yeah, so... I do! So, but you're also a rogue. Don't you have the ability to kind of within this first space? <gasps> you're kind of just like looking around, kind of just tapping around, and each large panel that makes up this thin corridor. You get the first feeling that one of them is not right. Like, not put together right? Like, it's... It's obviously... It's a, pl it's a pressure plate. Ah. Ah! Alright, Don Dante's gonna... Gonna tell, tell everyone behind him, like, Do not touch this plate. Good to know. Touch, do not. <laughs> Touch the plate. No. No. <laughs> do not. Do you actually? Touch, do not. No. Okay. <laughs> I, I was going to be very, very interested to see. Nah, uh, I'm, just mess I'm just messing with you, Dante. I wouldn't do something stupid like that. Seacher's on the side having a mini heart attack. <laughs> yeah. You're right, you're Dante, right there, Seacher. Dante's giggling. You all right there, teacher? You looks like you looks like you've seen a ghost or something. I am teetering ghost. on an anxiety attack with a police. Leo slowly lowers his arms. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, can I? So can you've I chosen doing life. This? <laughs> yeah. You can, can certainly keep... try. Okay, well, I'm gonna see if I can get a better better uh, roll for the next couple. You want me to roll Four again? Feet, uh, yes, please, to see right. if I can get something better than 14. 14. <laughs> 14? It's a 10! You are trying to inspect every single floor panel here. And you can see as, like, Savidin at this point, having just levitated over all of this, is like... I'll see you all when you can catch up. Okay. Oh, look at me. I can freaking float and I'm afraid to die. <laughs> I am afraid to die. You can't die. I can yeah. actually, believe it or not. It, it, but it's is a your problem. phylactery here? I'm not uh, telling no, you that. 
he know, actually dude. did in the last episode. I don't do this. It seems pretty hard for you to die. Out of what? out of character, he did actually say that in the last episode. That his soul is sent a phylactery far, far away. Yeah, I'm like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you exactly where it is. <laughs> no, I'm not asking where it is. I'm yeah. just saying you can't, since what yeah. could kill you is not here. I, I would like to stay here. That's that's the point. I do not want to like show up somewhere else. Oh, okay, know well, that that was um, part of it. Yeah. Did Dante find any other pressure pressure plates? Anything like that? Uh, not within the next 20 feet. Could I try helping them with the mage hand trying to, like, like, last time in the last place? Sure. She wouldn't be walking into it herself, I guess, but let's see. Yeah, it ain't gonna work. <laughs> yeah. You guys cannot find another pressure plate within the next 20 feet of you. Mm-hmm. Then... Dante is going to keep moving forward. As you do. Oh boy. I need Damn everybody it. to make a constitution saving throw. Damn it! <laughs> Blue, can you make that con throw? I am going to put guidance on this if I can. 14. Which <laughs> is just an extra d4. <laughs> Five. 16. Plus. For me or for you? For me. Plus okay, how about for me? Uh, do you have to add a d4 to it? That's how guidance works. Yep. Okay. All right. So okay. you gotta roll it. So nine. Okay, can you roll 16. it? I got nineteen in total. The roll for your father oh, and God. your mother as well. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah, they're fine. <laughs> they're right, how, level. How, 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 how about Dante? How about Dante? Oh, right, I gotta roll for you. Duh, I keep forgetting. What is yeah. your con? Yours is a plus five. You got 14 plus five, Dante. so that's 19. 19? Okay, good. So, Dante, you're f you're taking half damage. I got 19 as well. Uh, Citra, you're taking half damage. Uh... Your mother and father are taking half damage, but Leodon and Bro, you're both taking full damage of oh, a boy. grand total of. Oh no. Jesus Christ. Thanks. 32 Wait. points of lightning damage. Wait, were we topped off, by the way? No. Okay. Yeah. So all of you are taking 30, uh, 32 points of lightning damage halved as you, Dante, press down on one of the pressure plates and what are these long, almost Tesla coil-like things poke out of the sides of the wall and they emit a large field of electricity that comes rolling through this side of, the, uh, this side of all the traps as all of you are <coughs> shocked nearly half to death. <laughs> Can't Leo use absorb elements? Rob gives Dante a, sh a, a irritated look. <sighs> Dante <laughs> looks back at Bra. I'm so sorry. Citra just. I'm gonna use Can you absorb elements be more to careful? absorb half of that. So you're taking sixteen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm taking sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> As Ow. both Sicho's mother and father, like, mother's all like, Can you please be more careful? As <laughs> Tarion's all like, I'm almost dead! Please stop! She'll just walk over to her dad and cast her, uh. her, her, cure, her cure wounds on him real quick. Uh. <laughs> he gets 13 points back, at least. Yeah. <laughs> Ow. Alright. That hurt. How yeah. Feet is between the edge of this corridor and where I'm at right now. So you are you're, you're about 60, 70 feet away. 60, 70 feet away? Alright, cool. That's great. <laughs> Alright, um uh, shit. Kind of wish it was arrows this time. I kind of wish she's, like, was this time. she's just like patting out her clothes a little bit. That got a little singy. Okay. Um. Hmm, let me see. 
I can only misty step 30 feet, but I don't have my ability right now, do I? Mm-mm. All right, fuck it. Another investigation. <laughs> All right. <laughs> hmm? I'll give you guidance this time. Uh, so I'll give not. you a plus four on top of that. Your investigation okay. is still plus four, so it's going to be plus eight in total. Or, well, a plus four plus whatever I roll on top of that. Uh, yeah. Five, four. Oh, my God. What? You got a one. Uh-oh. Ah! <sighs> Someone else roll for Dante at this point. My dice are so cursed. Dante, you investigate and try and, like, no. not make the same mistake twice. Try and look a little past another 20 feet in front of you. Again, you are incapable of finding another trap. Can I try again, maybe? Even with my All negative? Right. Or does anyone else have a stronger investigation? Um, I think you have a strong... No, I do not have a negative one to it. <laughs> um, investigation, I have zero. I guess that's that's good. I've got a plus one. So, got um, So, Leodon beats it out. Wait, I have an idea. <laughs> Who's got the highest strength here? Uh, my me. I would imagine Leodon. I mean, I have plus six. I'm not sure where Leo has. You have plus six? Yeah. Plus six? Oh, like, save. Plus six strength? Oh, wait, saving throw. Saving throw. Oh, oh that's sorry. A, yeah. Oh, I was about to say. Plus two. You have a plus two? I have a plus four. Yeah. Damn. Plus, plus four? <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, when I, when I made the rule... <laughs> Yeah, when I made the rule that you could use your strength as a as a throwing mod, you know, I I think that was the smarter option, honestly. <laughs> okay, Dante's gonna look back to Leo. Leo, how how far can you toss me? Toss you? Toss me. I think I'm like uh, uh, Dante's gonna like look around back at himself. Uh, I want to say maybe one sixty. Where exactly do you plan for me to toss you? Um, <laughs> Dante, um, if you have I'm... Misty Step, you're probably better off using that versus someone trying to throw you. But I can't make it all the way is the problem. I don't think he can throw I you need... that far. I just need him to throw me 30 feet, that's it. <laughs> I can I can step off of a side wall here and then and then take it from there, but I need thirty feet. Don't make me you spare the dying on you for this uh, one. I'm I'm a furball. I'm pretty strong. Could I do some sort of check to determine if that's if I could even possibly throw someone thirty feet? That is based off of like kind of like what you can carry, like the load weight. Uh, I have a carrying capacity of 540 pounds. Jeez. So, that would totally be based off of, I would imagine, um, let's see. I would probably put that towards athletics. Hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> you would have to make an athletics you know check just to see if you can. You know pass what? Them. I've I've got something that's got less room for error, actually. Oh. Oh. Uh, and I'm going to put a hand on Dante's shoulder. And then Dante will dissipate into hundreds of tiny hummingbirds as I cast <laughs> Gaseous Form. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. Oh. Damn. But for us, willing, it'd be more like Dante creature. going, ah, and then just... <laughs> just, <laughs> just exploding into hummingbirds. Yep. Citrus is staring. What did you do? Uh, you transform a creature him. you touch along with everything it's wearing and carrying into a misty cloud for the duration. Ah. Uh, you have a flying speed of 10 feet. 
Uh, you can enter and occupy spaces of other creatures. You have resistance to non-magical damage. You have advantage on strength, dexterity, and constitution saving throws. You can pass through small holes, narrow openings, and cracks. Uh, Would he technically be able to actually try to see if he can find cracks as to where these plates are? <laughs> oh, we could do that for the next ten feet! Uh, and it lasts for an hour. Oh, I'm stuck like this for an hour. <laughs> you, or until I drop concentration on it. <gasps> Think fast, right? right. Okay, uh, Dante is gonna look for cracks for these pressure plates in the form of these hummingbirds. <laughs> I don't think any of us expected oh. this. <laughs> you T. broke him, Connor. You broke him. T. The problem is Lee. that oh, go the whole room looks the same, and like I'm trying to be fair here. You would have to actively look for what are the discrepancies of where these pressure plates are, and then be able to dictate that back to people that have no idea what you are saying due to the fact that you have no throat meat. To speak oh, back but, at them with. No, but, but like, I can, can spin circles around things that are dangerous. That so. a broad. I'm sorry. I was just going to say. Broad turns to. Broad turns to Leodon. Are you ter Are you going to turn me into hummingbirds one of these days? He says nothing. He just gives him a very slight smile. <laughs> <laughs> Citra would just look back, back to Luther going, Welcome to our group. You are all so very crazy and weird, and I like it. Well, I'm glad you do. It's entertaining. This will be the last and hilarious, if not somewhat glorious moments before my death. You really need to not think so negatively. What If you put negative out, you're going to get negative back. All right, Barry. Who? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Just somebody we knew. This long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> As all of you... Uh, or Dante, so the problem still persists of you trying to find the traps. Even as a gaseous form, it's... <laughs> it's not to find them. That's the point. So... You still have to roll investigation, but at least they wouldn't be activating a trap while doing so. Yeah. That's the yeah, whole point. Yeah, okay. Alright, Blue, um, roll me an investigation. <laughs> I'll say you'll have advantage because you're at, at much less danger to find them. Okay. I can't cast guidance on you like this, so it's just gonna be your your rolls. So each of them Whichever is the best plus one. Plus four. Alright, plus four to either one of these. How's Okay. I can I open them please? It won't let me see what it rolled. Cool. Oh, eighteen plus four or fifteen plus four? Sorry. Eighteen ah. plus four is the advantage. Okay. So 22. So you do happen to find a couple of pressure plates that are within the next 20 feet of you. And you'd circle them like... Yeah. yeah. As you dance around which ones are the dangerous ones. And there are obvious places where it's safe and places where it's not. Well, we'd be following. Yep. As all of you just like carefully tiptoe over each plate. How did you know another... find traps? <laughs> yeah. As another set uh, comes up to you, go ahead and roll me another uh, investigation with advantage. Alrighty, here we go again. Can I help? Can I help out with investigation as well? Uh, so both are sixteen. They were double eights. Uh, you can okay. certainly try, Bora. Uh, you're just at more of a risk. Yeah, we're letting I'm Dante. Over. Dude, if you set one off, it hits everybody. Oh, like you, what you did? Like oh, what, like what you, like, like what Dante did? Dante, Dante, sorry, uh, yeah, Dante did. Oh, yeah. like what Dante did? Yeah, 
The thing is, he's gas, so he's not setting things off. We can. Yeah. Do you do you want to try and help with the investigation? Uh, is there another stat I can can ins can I can insight help help out in this situation? Insight is more about reading a person. Uh, mm. It's like understanding a person. What about perception? Uh, perception is like pretty much what you are already getting in. Like so, you can uh, tell this room is perfect in all sides. It's finding the small discrepancies is why it's investigation. So like, uh, could we just be doing it by uh, looking, I'll, or do we have to touch? Then I'll then I'll be at, then I'll be too much of a risk. So I won't I won't help. Yeah. Okay. It, we are within three feet. We're getting there. Yep. Yeah. So all right. So um, the sixteen. Sixteen. Do it. It doesn't look like there is a problem. This area looks clear. Alrighty. <laughs> and then lightning comes from the sky, sky and pierces us again. Alright. Am I doing it again? Another pair? Do you do you want to move forward? I'm trusting Dante as best we can. Alright. You all move forward. I need you all to make a dexterity uh. saving throw. Huh. <laughs> With the exception of Dante, because Dante can't be hurt by physical uh, damage right now. So I'm going to take full damage of whatever you, oh whatever you're throwing, of whatever you're throwing at us. Damn. Are you just like you don't want to do the save? So oh, I, you rolled I, I, a seven. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Jesus I Christo! An Christ. And as for your parents, only your father makes it. All He's, right. He is the one that's mostly hurt. Let's see, it's not as bad as last time. I can tell you that. Eighteen points, as you see, Trut, feel your foot give on one of the pressure plates. You finally, you all feel something come raining down along your backs as the roof splits open just off to the side from top down a rain of arrows comes sliding along this entire room Citra now has deja vu <laughs> <laughs> ow as the little slits go <laughs> right back well I guess he didn't find it <sighs> cure wounds it is so how much? So what was the damage? Or you didn't say it yet. It was eighteen points of uh, piercing damage, uh, halved if you succeeded, which nobody did. Aside <laughs> from Darian. So I'm at fifty health now. At least you're not at thirty six. Jesus, never mind. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> the rest of us are squishies. <laughs> Remember, you're a okay. fighter and a barbarian. Your health is fucked. I get no armor, and I'm a spellcaster. Okay, um... What's Death yeah. Explorer? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's one of my ranger abilities. Uh, four times a day, I can give myself 1d8 plus four temporary hit points. Well, damn. That's useful. Useful to know. Let me useful. know when you use it. I've just used it. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> but at least say it to me so that way I know. I have a question. Yeah. How bi how wide are these walls? Like the the Ten feet across. Uh, so she couldn't use her wings at all. Hey, I also maintain concentration on nice. uh, gaseous. Can you imagine swarm. just drops activates oh, yeah. another trap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that would have been all kinds of funny. All right, Dante, give me one last investigation roll for this last push. Alrighty, let's okay. see. Okay. Yeah. That's a nat 20! That is a natural 20. Very nice. You do happen to find that there is a space where there is one trap on both platforms before the door. Both platforms. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Last 
two parts right here, 10 feet across, no matter what you do, is a trap. Uh. You can jump it. You can... You can jump it. You can try to see if you can deactivate it. But there's uh, not much you can do. It's going to activate regardless of what we do. If you decide to step on it, yes. So can we not step on it? Like, how big is this? You could, It's five feet across, ten feet wide. So you could jump it. I think we'll jump it? Yeah. Dante will... Dante in his gas form will make a jumping motion. Like a wait, 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 wait. Are there, is there a trap after the trap? Uh, okay. as, far, as far as Dante was able to find, there was no trap after these two traps. Just these. Yep. We just, okay. We just have to jump the five feet. I, I'm just, I'm just a little concerned that there's, there's a trap after that trap. Is there anything on the ceiling above them? As far as you can tell, no. It's nice smooth stone. Citra is gonna push her mage hand through, not touching the plates, but just through the the, the corridor. You know, passing through it, not touching the plates, just to see if anything happens if something just goes through the air above it. Nothing. It's just air. <sighs> Mom, how many healing spells do you have left? Four, maybe five. It, it does does Leo see that Dante's made it to the other side? I mean, you're a bunch of hummingbirds. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you, you, yep. you are uh, you're safely on the other side with a Zabidin who's just like watching, like ooh ah. Ee. Sob is probably glaring at Zabidin. <laughs> just okay, does that? Just, <laughs> See, try just trying to like tell Sabidin. <laughs> Alright, it's up to you guys. Do you want to jump it? You can jump it. Yeah, I think Citra's just going to tell Sob it's one way to find out, I guess. <sighs> She'll jump it. Alright, make an athletics check. Spoing? With her guidance. Because fuck that. So it's a dirty 20. You clear it. You jump it. You're She's perfectly just like, fine. It's, you land on the other side. You. She just like pats herself like, yeah. and then look back at the group. I'm good. And at least now the light's in front of you guys too, so. Yep. She'll take a step back to give space. Who's next? Who wants to make that jump? I'll make it. Alright, make me an athletics check. With a, I'll you. give you guidance. <laughs> Please, uh, okay, okay. Um, roll a d4. Roll a d4. Yeah. Roll a d4. Let me, let me see. Why? Why? Thirteen. You, Bora, are so goddamn heavy with all the armor that you have on. As you jump to try and clear the space, your front, the front of your feet hit the clear side, and then you think you're fine as your heels hit the back and then land on those platforms, and I need you Can to Can Citra try to grab him? I'll say yes. Make a... Mm. Link check? Or does, uh, does um, Citra still have Mage Hand activated? No, I can't use Mage Hand for that. It only carries up to like 10 pounds. It would just be me grabbing him. I'll say because this is a stunt, make a acrobatics check. Alright, I'll have the guidance going just in case. Oi, uh, so 15. 15? As you literally take your hand and you shove it into what is that front part of the armor and pull him as there is a 
large piece of the wall as they split backwards for a moment and a giant like swinging axe comes just behind as it scrapes just the bottom of the stonework and then and then the whole thing shuts back. Cedra had pulled him hard enough that she's just hugging him and staring at what just happened behind him and she's just like (laughs) <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just shh. thanks Cedra uh huh uh, it was a really big blade you as, as Dante you. flutters around <laughs> flutters around a bruh she's just I'll let go in a second give me a second <laughs> you okay you can Damn. let go now <laughs> Even Sob was like, oh boy. Hmm. <laughs> so, so don't touch the, the platforms. Yeah, bad idea. And she lets go. <laughs> I see. Yeah, thanks. Let's- She's gonna keep giving guidance to. Oh, she can't. You have to touch you. Never mind. It's a touch only, so. Alright. Leodon, you're next. Yeah. So there's, like, walls on the side of this, right? Yeah. Okay. You're what, eight feet tall? <laughs> I am. <laughs> you, can sc- you can literally just little, spread out a little and scoot. Bit, a little bit under eight feet tall. <laughs> if I take an extra large step, I might be able to clear that. That is true. Uh, Should be easy, then. Yeah. I could also just like. I think you should give him advantage on the for that. <laughs> you could just scoot sideways on the wall, <laughs> like Spider Man. I could also, I could also just climb on the wall. That is also something you I could do. Climb? I have a climb oh, speed. Okay. <laughs> I mean, for as as far as you could tell with these walls, they're they're perfectly smooth, which is the reason why they are what they are. I see. Yeah. Well. So you I'm just going. Either... To, I'm just going to use my. I'm just going to use my writhing tide, and I'm just gonna spread my wings out, and I'm gonna f- slowly flutter over the How hole. How big are your wings? <laughs> uh, big enough to carry me. Yeah, they're, they're, they don't like hit wall to wall. I imagine. Well, they're like they're not real. They're like a theory. Okay. Oh well, then yeah. <laughs> Minor unfortunately become physical, so I can't use it here. Yep. As you just go, as you just like. Land. As for Tarion, Citra is ready to grab whomever. <laughs> I've you got, can see, I'm stronger and I have longer arms, so I'm going to get ready to grab anybody who fails. You can see as Tarion picks up Eloise and literally just just tosses her over as hard as he can with success. Okay, I was like, did he just toss my mom to her death? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And she just, like, gracefully... It's almost like a dance. Like, you know, like, when they toss each other, like, that's what it kind of looks like. And she just lands perfectly fine. And then you can see as the two... Lothric and Tarion stare off at each other. Once more. See, Drew just deadpans again. Can we... Can we keep moving? We have we have an army behind us. After you? No. After you. Lothric, I'm warning you now. Don't. Dad, same goes for you. As your father turns, it's hard not to put your back to somebody that you don't trust. Not gonna lie, Citra probably has a fireball just in case he dies to kill her dad. Damn it. As your father jumps, you can see as he jumps to clear it, but you can see something, just a twinge in the eye. 
the pain from earlier is catching up to him. As he falls short. I'm going to try to grab him. The <laughs> Make me an acrobatics check. Acrobatics, not strength? It's acrobatics because it's a stunt. Oh, right, right, right. I see. Could I help him? Because acrobatics is my main skill. I will give you... I will give Leodon advantage. Okay. Because he was the one to make the move, and you do have the same skill. Nat 20, baby! Nice! Nice. As you can... 21! As you can see as the pain twinge, as he jumps, you can see it's just not enough. As you go and you grab each side and pull him along, and then Citra also from under the belt kind of both pull him over, and you can see as he's Come on. back over, and you can see as he hits the ground, his knee just yeah. gives way into the stone. Work. She'll give him another cure wounds in that case. <sighs> uh, <sighs> nine more points of healing on her dad. <sighs> Dad, what did he do to you? Nothing good. She'll help him back up. As Lothric now stands just across the platform. Come on. She's holding out her hand to him. She's holding out her hand to him, like, let's go. Come on. They're gonna kill you if you stay there. Would that be so bad? Come on, buddy, get a move on! You wanna die to them? Probably not die. Maybe hold off. Lothric, please don't backstab. I, I wasn't lying to you. I'm not actually backstabbing any of you. Then what are you planning to do? Well, we now know exactly where in every single one of these platforms are. Uh-huh. I have a bow and arrow. You want to lay in wait and trap them? It might be useful. This is... It's just a hallway. Where are you going to hide? I have no intention of hiding. But as far as I am aware, if this is as important as you say it is, just do me one small favor. As long as you explain it, I'm not going to agree to anything blind. If I somehow don't escape this madness. You'll let them know to turn over my glass, will you? So her face would actually soften, soften a bit here. And just, I promise I'll do it. But I do mean it. We get out of all this. I want to be able to see if we can make this place your home and give your people peace. So you have to keep doing things like this. Let's see if whether or not peace can be an option with me. Yeah. You need to stay alive at least, so I'm going to ask you to try. Fair enough. He puts behind the large spear as he pulls out his long uh, long bow and small quiver of arrows. <sighs> well, go on. I don't want to be any more of a problem to any of you as I already have been. Shoo! Don't. <laughs> Does Dante poof out of the little bird form? Oh yeah, I drop concentration on it. <laughs> 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 <Right>? <laughs> okay. Alright. Well, thanks for that, Leo and Lothric. Stay fucking alive! Your people need you anyway. They don't. Mm. They really don't. Well then, ta-ta! Bye-bye! Bye. Try not to die! Gonna try!
As hey. all of you make it to the next door, once again you see large pair of doors with what looks like to be a golden band. Again? Mm -hmm. Well, she pulls out the last like arrow that was stuck in her shoulder. <sighs> okay. <laughs> She's got blood there anyway. Alright. <laughs> You just tap it on and then place your hand on it. Is Savidin there? Savidin is there, but he is immediately distracted with what is a small space off to the side. Savidin, did anything activate while you're in here? No, but I did find something. What did you find? As he pulls out with what looks like to be a large stone slab with what looks like to be words, hieroglyphs, and a piece of an image. Does it ring any bells for me, or even Sav? Sav notices something. What do you got there, buddy? The one depiction that hasn't been made on many of these murals. The eyes. They are these deep, rublet red eyes. So, what's going on? I remember those eyes. His eyes? Yeah. Why were they red? I don't want to think about it. So we're going into this tomb. They were given to him. G given? As in... A gift. A gift from... The King of Lemuria. <coughs> You're kidding me. Okay. The red eyes were a mark of a warrior's prowess. Yeah, and Citra would be relaying this message to the group at this point. Because <gasps> also Savidin would like this information. <laughs> so, those are Amin Ra's eyes. Um, my friend is telling me that these were given to him by the King of Lumeria. Uh, what was the last bit? It was a, a warrior's prowess, right? Mm -hmm. And she'll look at Sabine and like, I will explain later where this is coming from. For now, I just need you to trust where uh, what I'm telling you. Very I well. know it's very confusing. <laughs> well then, let's move on. As all of you enter into the next room... Yeah, because you know she'd do the same thing again to open the doors. Yep. As the gold bands begin to melt within the doors and open. As the doors open and swing with air-like consistency, you are met with a very strange room. As out in front of you is somewhere along 30 feet before it goes down into what is this massive clearing. And the entirety of this place is just black. It is an abyss. And as you look down, you can see what are two small torches, ever lit, ever burning, 
several hundred feet down. Several hundred feet down, cool. <laughs> How, the room is massive? Mm-hmm. Uh, so light gives off 20 feet. How much does it give off if she uses her wings? About 10 feet. So another, so it'd be 30 feet in total if I were to combine them? Yeah. Okay. She'd step a little bit away from them so that she doesn't blind everybody. Yeah. And she'd use the wings. She's like, well, we're not in a hallway anymore. Um, Dante is gonna summon Virgil. Yeah. Alright. I know and you don't want to gonna... hurt him, but he's probably best off going ahead of us. As yeah. Virgil comes to your call, as you look down and beyond, you can see something else. There are floors beneath here. And they're slowly beginning to fill. With sand? With sand. Uh, Sabine, remember that, that thing about the whole soul being in a pit of sand and all that? I think it's about to reenact it. Oh, this is a trap room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shit. We have, to, we have to find the door now. As you hear a large burst coming from a wall and the s of sand beginning to fill. And with that, that's where we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. Oh boy. Yeah. Hey, hey. moment. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, that being said... Uh, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take a quick ten minute break, then we will be right back to see where the sand pit room lands all over you. Alright, see you all in ten minutes. Oh, and so yes, cool. the pit of despair.
Hello, and welcome back, everyone. Ah. Uh, you are all ah. about to do some pretty insane shit. It's time, time, to, time to run. <laughs> time to run. And with that, since we already know where we last left off, let us kick off where we last left off. The pit of despair. <laughs> The pit of the sphere. So, <clears throat> as you begin to hear the very violent introduction of sand beginning to enter this room, what do you all do? I would suggest anybody who can fly or float try to find an exit really quick. Right, Dante's gonna tell Virgil to find the exit and find it fast. All right. Just see, you're asking yourself, you wouldn't happen to have any kind of knowledge about this room, would you? Uh, absolutely not. Okay, uh, fair question, <laughs> but okay. Ah. Uh, 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 it's, he's just like kind of worried and panicking as you begin to notice that. The door behind you, since closing, has also begun to slowly fill with sand where okay. you guys had entered through here. Time to move! Alright. Alright. Um, using my writhing tide again, and I'm going to look around for, uh... Citra's going to offer her hand to her mom. Anything that might look like an <laughs> yeah. exit. I can't use dark vision. You can't. Unless the, the worm's dark? You have better vision in the room when it's dark. All right. That's all it is. The, yeah. I just need to know that the, if the room was dark. Alright, if that's the case, then I can, you, I'll use dark vision then. You have dim lit, uh, ca like, flames down below. You also have Citra with both the light spell and her wings causing more light, and I'm assuming if her dad uses his wings, it's about probably be the same. Pretty much. Alright, so let's... So I'll use my dog vision then. Okay. Alright. As you guys begin to look around and see, towards the bottom you notice that the sand is only filling on one side, as on the far off side you see what is that large door. Time to go Down to the below. Door. Yeah, down below, you can see, as the sand is beginning to fill, it is also closing a wall that is slowly rising, 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 rising along with the sand. Seacher's probably going to look at the wall first, if that's starting to be covered, if there's an answer to what the hell's going on. And if it's written in Celestial, she has a better bet of reading it. There's nothing written on it. It's no. just, it gets higher as the sand begins to fill the room. But, like, the wall is rising? The you wall mean? is rising with the sand. Pretty much, here's what you need to know. Yeah, sorry, I'm having a hard here time. Here is the wall. Uh-huh. Here is the door. As the sand begins to fill on this side, it's going to close off the rest of the room and then fill the entire, this side with sand. And this side is going to be fine. Okay, time to get to the other side of that wall. Yeah. <laughs> as far as you can tell, there is a unbelievable drop that goes from this wall an entire empty area, and then that door with that space. Okay, and if we're flying... Yep, as if you're flying, you should be oh. fine. Yeah, uh, anybody who's flying would help those who can't fly, I, Dante and Buddha, to get across, I'm sure, and Sivitan floats. Yep. About well, Poppy. <laughs> Poppy can fly. Poppy can fly? He's Asimar. Where do you think Citra got her bloodlines from? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that would that would be the plan. So that okay, leaves so at least two two people with no possibility of being able to fly. No, but if two people who can fly carry them, or even still, uh, could Leo also ca cause a cast gaseous form again on one of them? That is true. If that's something you want to do, <laughs> Gasbra, Gasbra, this time, Gasbra, jeez. I can. <laughs> so yeah, that would be the plan. Uh, I'm gonna guess. Oh no! Ah, great. Right. 
All right. <laughs> All right, go. Oh, wait, so. this is a perfect time for that fart reverb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. All right, so you turn Bra into gas. Wait, I didn't. I didn't <laughs> You're the heaviest one agree. in works. <laughs> I didn't agree to this. Last words before turning to gas. <laughs> yep. You now take up a gaseous form. You can float. I can just imagine Leonard just having a shitty grin after doing that. <laughs> Get your wish, right? <laughs> yeah. You can a- say ask, he wouldn't. And you shall receive. Mm hmm. All right, who's carrying old Dante uh, here? Sense. Probably gonna be those who can fly with a good enough strength check. All right, so is it gonna Probably be gonna end up being me, Leo, or is <laughs> it was either gonna be Leo or Poppy? Both. <laughs> Both. Uh, Poppy is looking a lot better from after being healed multiple times, but at this point, he's taking he's care not of not. A- yeah, he's taking care of his wife. Yep. Because okay. his child can fly. <laughs> Yep. If anything, I would help. I would help uh, Leo make sure Dante gets across safely. <laughs> and she is the f- she is the form of light helping you guys get through. <laughs> All right. As all right, we're getting the cross. You slowly do. I need all of you uh, that are flying to make an acrobatics check. Shit. Well, if I'm helping Watch Leo. Me feel <laughs> You're fourteen. Uh, you're a gaseous saw, form. Uh, actually, uh, Burrow doesn't have to because he doesn't have to worry about what's going to happen next. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. Uh, she touch anybody nearby with guidance this whole time. Uh, oh boy. Then so they don't to slap a guidance on Leo. Yeah. I could use 17 it. Seventeen for Citra. <laughs> Seventeen for Citra. Uh, it's a. F- is it a. F- you get plus four, bud. Uh, fif- 15 for me. Okay. She, with that pl- plus four? It's. Well, plus D4. You have to roll the oh, D4. Yeah, D4. yeah. I did. I rolled a one. Okay. And her parents? And... Like, Citra is making, like, movements between everybody because she's panicked. As all of you. Take a dive off the ledge and begin to take flight. Also, I need to do speed as well. Okay. As all of you take a dive off, you notice above what are these now large pillars of sand beginning to form down and and you guys have to quickly move around and twist. Lead on and Dante. Uh, you guys barely get clipped, almost losing your momentum before catching yourselves. Citra, perfectly fine. Uh, Bora, you just... You're it's gas. sand. Yeah, you just go... <laughs> boom. Yep. <laughs> and just go across as easily as the wall begins to rise higher and higher another pillar as it comes down and it hits Savin as he gets caught under it he is hit and then just like hits the large pile of sand which is now beginning to build up very quickly Citra's gonna immediately go for him if that's the case as you do and he just points to you and says, "Go, just fucking go!" Stop. Stop. Fine. The pile of sand begins to build up on top of him. Yep. And as for your mother and father, they also barely get clipped before your father just twists around and then comes back and moves forward. I need you all to make one more acrobatics check. We're keeping that guidance, guys. Except for, it's, except for me, of You're course. Right? Except for you. Yeah, you you got, are fine. This yeah, was the smart decision to turn him into yeah. gas. <laughs> <laughs> it was the better option. Oh, it baby. Was the, it was the best option. Alright. I got 20. Alright. I got a 19. She's giving a plus four to her, or deep force to her parents, seeing as she'd probably be coming up behind them now. 
All right. Thank God these are at will cantrips. <laughs> as <laughs> Leodon and Citra, as you both begin to see as the wall now beginning to close even higher, you both slightly run along what is about 30 feet of this large stone piece beginning to rise and your parents also just like bah, 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 just full speed before finally as all of you clear over the wall and the giant giant piece of stone <laughs> closes up top where the roof is it just slams against the wall like <laughs> you know we lost Sabine. But you know he's not dead. He's just, we don't know he's gonna pop up now. Let's now let's just hope he has enough knowledge of this place. We're assuming he'll pop up back in here. Maybe pop out another side, another side door, or something like that. Or someplace entirely different. Or someplace entirely different. <laughs> All right. Um, how dark is this room? You've got light. You, you've oh, got okay. light, but you notice that there are the two small flames hundreds <laughs> of feet down as all of you begin to slowly make your descent into the next room. Citra's keeping the wings out now. <laughs> as you finally hit the bottom of this, see with what was those two small torches are these giant braziers that just are ever burning and flaming. How? And this large door with another depiction upon it. What does this look like now? You see an individual who looks old. <laughs> you can see somebody that is worn You can see that the first time in an actual larger depiction of those ribolette eyes, that golden scythe, this being who has spent many, many decades fighting a war of not just only attrition, but self-righteousness. So these are his end days. And you can see that there is not much that is surrounding them this time, aside from what looks like to be the first true depiction of what is this large building, the start of the tomb. So nothing much, like there's no people or anything depicted anywhere, it's just him by himself. Mm -hmm. Did he put himself down here? Um, I mean, it's not unheard of that people, you know, at this level having tombs made for them. He's by himself. I mean, when you're that awful, not many would really want to stick by you. Is there anything else on the walls, or it's just that? Because she's also trying to help put things together for Sav. There is something else, though. Especially for Sav, who takes note to it. Sav, I don't mean to pry, but... You trust me, don't you? I wonder why people turn to madness when they feel so threatened. Why did you feel threatened? He spent so much of his life fighting. This was the early times. 
Oh, people knew this war. No such thing as peace kind of deal. And every single promise of it was either a promise by some otherworldly being or at that point a fallen king. You think the Lumerian king drove him like this? No. He drove himself like this. He pushed everyone away. He pushed everyone that was important to him away. Were you one of those people? No. Nothing else is really coming to mind. Not now. No. So I'm gonna ask one big question. Seeing as where we're going, are you planning to think that we will be separated completely after all this? Please don't lie to me about it. I want the answers as much as you do. I feel like as I get deeper down here, the more I'm remembering. It's slowly coming back piece by piece. I don't know what's going to happen to us. If that is what you're asking, I do not know. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you weren't planning to say goodbye. That's all. Open the door for now. Okay. This that whole part she kept between them. She didn't say anything to the group because that was a little personal. She'll move forward again and open the next door. But like the more they go through these doors, the more troubled she looks. Yeah. As you place your hand upon the giant golden van as it sinks deep within the door once more. You can see as the image changes once more. But only to the sight of you, Citra. And assuming Sov? And Sov. That something stands behind them in their old age. You see An this? individual. Almost like a shroud, a shade. A shade of red. Like a devil. Just standing right behind them. Like, devil as in, like, what her bloodline has to it? Uh, what's his face? Uh, Mephistopheles? Close to. But not him, or at least we don't know. It... Like a shade. It's something there. Just quietly Eight. looking. That's... <laughs> you can't see this. Wait. Wait. I, I can't see this? Nope. Nope, you cannot see this. No, but Citra okay. would relay this. It's, she'll be talking about it first as if she thinks the rest can see it. You you see that, right? Like She'll like step back see a little what? bit. Yeah. That red shade creature? Devil? And she'll um, like she'll point like <laughs> up there. Dante's gonna look and it's gonna just be that sad old man on his sad old temple on his sad old sands. <sighs> they can't but... see it. <laughs> Why is that? Like, is there, like, a form of magic hiding it from them? Possibly. Perhaps it's a message through time. 
well, as you all enter through the door. We we knew we knew that Azure and Mephistopheles were looking for this tomb. Mm-hmm. That's starting to freak her out a little bit. As I mean, the door closes, and you all enter this nice open room. You are met with what looks like to be a massive old tomb. Along this wall, as goes from side to side and in the center of it is this massive pedestal this piece this dices that stands in the center of it with what looks like to drop far down below and beneath is almost like darkness but you can see just the slightest glimmer of silver Silver? Like... Like sword silver, like... Steel. Just... Ever so barely beyond the darkness. Down below. In that Down dirt. below. Like, is it just a drop, or...? It's a drop. It, everything is standing on with what looks like to be these four long pieces that kind of cross oh okay got it got it got it and then at the center is this diocese and at the top you can see a tomb a coffin sarcophagus if you will and in this room as it's becoming more and more clear to all of you there are several several treasures gold documents Pieces of paper that are just strewn strewn across several faces. What looks like to be art that just aligns the entirety of this wall. Is there any other door or is this this is it? This is it. Oh. This is the tomb of Amun-Ra. We found it. Don't touch anything. She looks right at Dante. (laughs) Dante... (laughs) Dante about to reach for something just to inspect it. Okay, okay, I'm not. Every room had a trap. (sighs) And as all right, well, the paper is what we're looking for. (laughs) No, we're not. We're not looking for those papers. They they can stay here. As your mother and father look around. Try and find and look for something. That's what you want us to look for. Since it's just us now, Sav knows that that staff that Amin Ra has has uh, was it the four shade uh, four um, shards of a what is it called again? Fragments. Fragments, sorry. Fragments of prime four evil. He has four fragments of prime evil in that staff. That's probably the power that Deus was promising him, and probably what he wants. Besides whatever's written on those papers. Unless he somehow believes he's gonna bring back Amin Ra himself. Also, there's something silver down below. She's just looking down now. <laughs> okay. Well, then I think we'll start with just looking around. Yeah. Dante, you think Virgil can see what's down there? Yeah, I think I can, I can send him down there. Sorry, buddy. Okay. Virgil, <laughs> sorry, buddy. I know I gotta send you all the <gasps> scary stuff. <laughs> we'll bring you back. And- I send... <laughs> As you send Virgil down, yeah, 
Virgil, being a glowing entity, can give off uh, about 10 feet of light. As he goes down there, uh, it drops down to about 60 feet into a pit of spikes. Oh! Oh! So no one fall. So is it just spikes down there? Mm -hmm. I would believe that maybe these pathways that lead to him might fall. (sighs) Alright, so that means... Wait, so there's there's something floating above this? No, it's... You've got, like, I guess, four pathways leaning to the center where the sarcophagus is at. Uh-huh. And then it's just a drop below that where there's a pit of spikes and things along the sides. Right? Ah. Uh. It's pretty accurate. Citra would, while people, I guess, are looking around the sides, try to just kind of hover over the sarcophagus, not touch anything. Okay. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw, Citra. Saving throw? Okay. Mm hmm. How's a nat 20? Nat 20. There is a slight call in the back of your mind. You can hear words. Ah, <sighs> Say that one more time because it's hard for me to hear that. (laughs) It's not really much words that you would understand. They're beyond language. Sorry, sorry guys, I need to pause. I need to pause because they're kicking us out of the parking lot. Oh, shit. (laughs) I'll be right back. Pause. Pause. Is that the mark the audio for me? For a future, for a future you, yeah. Yep. Rasafon. Is that Rasafon? Nope. It's just random words that sound really creepy. Eh, part of the course in the tomb. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I have watched enough fucking mummy <laughs> to know when shit's about to get weird. And then a demo tap. Well, okay. <laughs> Sorry to everyone for having to take a quick pause. It is what it is. It is what it is. But if it's that old. Trying to figure out if everyone's doing okay. I'm fine. I am just. I'm fine. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> Feels very low energy. No, I just have a headache from the <laughs> swelling in the back of my head. I mean, I get that. And I'm getting over a cold. Oh, fun. Y'all are picking up some dots that we're picking up, right? Like, because I am terrified that Sob's going to turn out to be the lost soul of Amon Ra or some shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's going to suck so much, if that's true. I'm just gonna wait on Desi. Hope they're okay and they're not like getting in trouble with cops or something. Yeah. Probably just security going, alright, out. You know. Yep. Had I wished I had known that they had gone to a ski resort, I wouldn't have tried to fucking do this. 
It is what it is. <laughs> It seems like there is a ton of purpose to try and not get this done, and it kind of gets me a bit. You want to know what? Mm. I'm not going to waste any more time on this. They can be caught up when they when they get caught up. Okay. I'm assuming you're trying to hit a beat so that the next game is just right into whatever it is you have planned. Yep, that's kind of the point. All right, Connor, die you there? I'm still here. All right. You have him here. <laughs> Because I would like to not um, waste time. Okay. I'm back from break. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, heard a creepy voice in a language she doesn't understand, but she would immediately go, Sob, you heard that, right? You begin to hear Sob repeat back what was being said. She's going to stop approaching, but Sav, what, what are you saying? I need you to make another, another wisdom saving throw. Alrighty. Dirty 20. Dirty 20. Almost as if to kind of mouth the words, you're trying to fight whatever is drawing you closer to that. Yeah, she's gonna. If she's able to keep beating these, she's just gonna suddenly start frantically back beating her wings to move herself backwards. Yeah, as you feel like something is pulling at your chest. Don't tell me as... I'm right. <laughs> Leodon, you notice throughout the darkness and something strange going on. You can see almost as if. Citra is fighting silently, almost as if you can see lines of her being pulled towards closer to the sarcophagus. Like, the wings are frantically being like a freaked out bird. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's seeing, that, seeing that she's struggling with something, Leah will, will go up and... What's happening? I don't know. <laughs> Sob's acting weird. Sob, 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 is this coming from her too? It's almost as if your your voice is saying what you're saying, but your mouth is moving in that way. Got it. And throughout the tomb, you can hear a doo -doo -doo. I need you to make another wisdom saving throw. Oh boy! Oh boy! An eight. <laughs> Before Leodon, as you see as Citra says, I don't know what's going on, you can see the eyes glaze over. And as she falls back into your arms, something comes out Citra. of her mouth as it. <sighs> As it leaves, it goes down into the sarcophagus. Oh, man. As it does, it hits the sarcophagus and you can see this entire diocese begin to glow. Is she still conscious? Yeah, Leo, Leo's gonna see this happen, look back down at Citra and try and try and see if she's breathing, like, put a hand on her head. Like, he's hand, holding her at this point, I'm uh, sure, then. On her, 
<laughs> yeah, put his palm on her chest to see if he feels a heartbeat at all. Citra. You feel a very slow heartbeat as Citra is currently catatonic. Oh, did the wings drop then? No, they still glow. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> it's almost as if whatever was pulled out pulled out everything. Oh, shit. Okay. As your mind begins to kind of fill within the void, you can hear voices, sounds, and suddenly a small vision Jade's back. Okay. As you, Citra, open your eyes and you hear the wind blowing and you see what is the sun setting to the south of this tomb. An isle of sand. And an individual long, graying hair holding a large staff and behind you, as it begins to walk forward, a dark-skinned individual, long flowing robes and the headpiece with the large gear behind him, staring at the sunset. You know why I'm here. Old friend. Does she know the voice? It's familiar to Erethus. Oh boy. You broke your own laws. Killed thousands. Stripped your land dry. Be not a word to say for yourself. Very well. Your punishment will fit the crime. I will leave you in solemn sorrow. And then when the time comes, when I feel it so, I will make you live. And with that life, you will learn exactly what you have taken from so many others. And then I will hope that you will see value in that life. And then I will take it away from you as well. As she places a hand on his shoulder, you can see as the body begins to slightly crumple beneath. And as the head turns, almost as if to lock eyes with you. What, is she Jedi knighting this shit? <laughs> Just up there as a spirit? Just curiously to look almost at you. Huh. And in the hand you can see what is that wispy like soul. And then the form just disappears beyond a void. And Citra, as you breathe <gasps> in the arms of Leodon. Citra! She's, she's, her eyes are kind of frantically looking around again, just. But um, her hands, like, one of them's just, like, ripping at his jacket. Just. <sighs> Does she hear Sav anymore? Sav is gone. 
or something. Sob is gone. Yeah. If that's the case, if she feels that emptiness, it's just going to be immediate tears, just staring straight ahead at the, the sarcophagus in the middle. He's gone. He's gone. As those low you begin to see as the room begin to light just she's looking around but she's eventually going back and back sov and something familiar about this sight as you're standing here you begin to realize the vision the sight beyond that wall the one that made you wait so long to see. As the sarcophagus bursts open. Revealing as an individual in these deepened reddish cloaks. These two long horns and these long golden wings. Along with what looks like to be this large staff with four greenish jewels set inside of them. This begins to almost raise out like the Undertaker. Just. And stepping upon the diocese, you can see what was the face of Sov. As this individual stands before you all. Sov? Oh. Dante just stares in disbelief. I see now. Sov. Saharav. Amen Ra. No. No. <laughs> oh, you you're Amen Ra? Dante looks over to see Did he did he tell you this? She's at first point. Anyone else's voices almost sound muffled to her. She's just kind of in shock. Yeah. I see. So she took more than just my soul. So much memory. Beginning to slightly float up towards you both. She doesn't actually flinch. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know. The design of the gods are often cruel. I'm starting to realize that. It is something I realized long ago. So what now? I finish my punishment. No. It's not fair. It never is. She'd actually reach her hand out to him. Does he have wings? He does have wings. Da Dante is going to remember the first memory of seeing those wings and seeing him before them. There are two things you need to know. What? I am the one who is capable of giving you the power 
to stop it, Wolf. You are? You see as the staff comes close, you see the four golden, these four greenish jewels. The shards. Fragments, sorry. Should they be forged under the moon and then blessed by death? They will grant you the power to put away and slay the witch queen. And while these machinations are not just only the witch queen herself, it is what she possessed and what your enemies possess now. The amulet of the Red King and the staff of the White Queen are not two separate things. They are one. They're gonna put them together. They are the staff or the wand of Orcus. <sighs> Figures. Wait. Wait, does Dante know about the fragments? You do. Yeah, Citra eventually told you, even though Harleen told her not to say anything, but <laughs> when we saw the sword the second okay. time, she told you. Okay, and then Dante's gonna say, then... And then what of the other fragment of Primeval? Your brother has it. I am not aware much of the Arkham Blade. But I remember its power, much like my own. Did someone push you to this? You and I both saw that devil shade on that wall. I have no idea what you're talking about. You didn't see it then. Shade, you said? Yeah, she explained to you she saw, like, a devil-like shade-ish image on the wall before it opened. Wait, does this sound familiar to the shade that was in my vision when I was talking to, uh, to the goddess? Because there was something in the shadows. A red shade. A red shade. Was there a red shade in my vision when I was talking to the goddess? It was a creature in red. Oh. A creature in red? <sighs> oh, lordy. <laughs> Dante's just like... There's yeah. something else. There's something else among this. Whatever it is that these beings, the scions of the Red King, they are agents of Orcus. And it is not just Igwell to worry about. No. There is... He's off. A few others amongst all this. And therefore... It is now my task to assure that all of you... Are ready for the coming battle. Okay. As you can see as the hand moves up closer towards your face. It nearly grabs your chin. You remember what I asked you? Yeah. I do. It's unfair. It's horrible. It's terrible. But it must be done. Right now. Right now. You're my best friend. You are my sister. But it must be done. As to push off from you and then land back towards the center of the diocese. The staff slams down and turns into this large scythe-like thing. I am Sav Harav Amenra. And I am tasked by the gods. To determine if you are ready for the oncoming fight. If you want these fragments. If you want my treasures. You'll have to kill me. Dante is now seeing the opposite. 
of the first memory he had of Sov. He just <laughs> closes his eyes and just... <sighs> She'll well, kind of... Crest. <laughs> She'll just kind of tap Leo that she can be let go now so she can hold herself up and just pull out her staff. Very shakily, but she's pulling out her staff. He'll release her and pull out the slipstream. I don't want to do this, but I made a promise. Dante pulls out his bow and studies it. <laughs> Stares at you, Bora. We have to fight him, Bora. We don't have a choice. Are you sure there's no other option? Yeah. Rob, Rob plays his plate. She looked to her parents just to make sure they're okay and prepared for this one. They prepare by drawing their own weapons. Good. The stage is set. All of you. Come. And that's where we're going to go ahead and end tonight's episode. Alright. Ow! <laughs> right in the fucking feels, man! Yeah, no, I'm crying. <laughs> 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 I wasn't sure what we were gonna have to do, but oh man, this is such a bad parallel. <laughs> yep. The f it's like a it's it's like a part of me Literally. was torn out. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> the fire and bell of the awkward of friends we made along the way. Yeah. Thanks for grabbing Sea because there's a pit of fucking spikes down there. Yep. So <laughs> we'll see what happens next week. I, I don't have any major announcements uh, aside from hey, I posted a brand new uh, test scene over on Patreon for How to Be an Adventurer if you haven't caught up on that. Um, this episode may not be out for a while, mainly because of scheduling and trying to time everything up. We're doing our best. <laughs> yeah, we're doing our best. So with that being said, uh, that's all I have. Blue, how you now? I don't know, you just ripped my soul out and crushed it, thanks. <laughs> uh, doing good. That Happy New Year. Um, so hi, Blue Casanate. I play the Nephilim and heart-shattered Citra right now. Uh, <laughs> you can find me over on Twitter mainly uh, with the same name. I am also currently playing a little mini series called C4 over with Burnout Vaughn, both on his Twitch channel and YouTube. Uh, it's Burnout, and the uh, Vaughn is spelled V-A-U-G-H-A-N. Uh, we have two episodes out right now, probably three maybe by the time this is out. Uh, if you guys want to check it out, I'd skedaddle over there and take a look. Yeah. I'm going to go cry now. Right. Someone else take up. <laughs> All right. Connor. Hi. Uh, I... I'm Distortion Devil. I played Leodon the Furball Ranger. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil. Uh, I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, that That's really all I've got as well. Working on some homebrew nice. stuff on the DMC. All right. Next up, Jade. Hey, this is Jay the Firefox, who plays Dante, your changely rogue paladin. Um, I'm working on a couple commissions for Daito. He's got some fun things coming up, too. Uh, Pokemon stuff. Pokemon stuff. And, um, 
Uh, nothing, nothing much else other than Hive no longer exists anymore, so message me on Tumblr. Wait, 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 what? It, I can't do anything on it anymore. I can't even sign into mine. <laughs> I haven't tried. Anyways, Tumblr, Instagram, unfortunately, and yeah, those are the only two places you'll be able to get in contact with me. All right. And last but not least, Daito. Yeah, there's Daito, um, aka Bra, the Half Orc Samurai. So I'm gonna be streaming Mondays, Wednesdays, and Sat and Saturday. Monday I'm doing a waifu tier list for 2022. It's different. Hopefully, and hopefully we'll be doing some something else, something else for KWC involving that in this month. Hopefully, depending on depending on the host. Um, Wednesday I'm gonna continue my Nuzlocke. Nuns left for Sword and Shield, and Saturday I'm going to do more work on my Gohan vs. P.E. game, which is actually coming along, and hopefully I should be wrapping that up. Nice. Well, the first it, boss. It looks really nice. Yeah, thank you. I thought those final moves. Yeah. And KDOC, hopefully go, the Elsa episode will be up next week. Oh, God. Or by the... By yep. the time, by the time the episode, by the time this episode drops, and that's it for me. Alrighty, no more pressing matters. No, no. Just, nope. just saw me ripped cry. out of my body. You know. <laughs> Literally. Uh, we called it. We called it early on. I was hoping you did it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta commit. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that being said, uh, well. Thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, we love you. Stay safe out there. And as always, see you next Sunday. Bye. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody. Laters. Bye bye. Laters. <laughs>